Hey everybody, this is Ty Terrell with IFAS University and we're going to talk about intensity. This is an introductory lesson on how, what intensity is in our programming and, and, and how we can use intensity to create the adaptation that we want. For the sake of this lesson, we're going to talk about intensity as a percentage of your rep max. That could be a one rep max, a three rep max, or a five rep max. That can be used in any way you want in your programming. We don't have to definitively say uh, everything is a percentage of your one rep max. Uh, we use percentages of different rep maxes here at IFAST all the time in our programming. Now we know there are two ways to increase a training load. You either increase the intensity, you increase the volume, or you increase both. If you want to hear more about volume, there's another lesson this month on how we use volume to create adaptations. I'd recommend you guys go check that out. The intensity is, is, a, is a vital factor in the adaptation that takes place because it is the magnitude of the load. If volume is how much we are doing over a span of time, intensity is how hard uh, that volume is. Now let's talk about intensity uh, in our training. So we're gonna break this down into a few categories here. We're gonna talk about speed strength, strength speed, hypertrophy, and max strength. Speed strength and strength speed are really power. So essentially we're gonna be talking about power, hypertrophy, and max strength. There are slight differences between strength speed and speed strength. And speed strength, the load is usually 20 to 40% of your one rep max. It's a little bit more towards the speed end of power. Uh, it should be a light load moved at an extremely fast pace. Strength speed is going to be roughly 40 to 60% even of your one rep max. It is a medium load moved at a medium pace. It's more towards the strength end of the power curve. So just to give a little bit more clarity on uh, what I'm talking about with speed, strength, and, and strength speed, imagine a, a spectrum, and this is speed, and this is strength. S speed strength is going to be more towards this end. Strength speed is going to be more towards this end, but they are both power. Because strength speed is more towards the strength end, it can improve intramuscular coordination. It also improves your rate of force development. So how fast can you produce force? And that is absolutely, absolutely key in sports. The intramuscular coordination is simply how well do you recruit the motor units to make the contraction happen? How fast do you do that? And how synced are they? Speed strength, because it's not so much strength based, it will improve um, rate of force development, so how fast you can produce that force, but it won't do as much for the intramuscular coordination. Now let's talk about hypertrophy. This is simply muscle growth. We're trying to increase the mass or size of the muscle on our body. You're going to be using loads between 60 to 65 percent and even as high as 80 percent of your one rep max. Now we know the name of the game in hypertrophy is to get a volume. We have to have enough volume to, to create uh, an increase in mass on, of muscle. So that will help determine what your percentages you use. If you have more of a capacity to work towards the higher end, maybe 75, 80% of your one rep max, do so. If you don't have that strength base built, that max strength base built, then you might wanna work towards the lower end, so uh, 60 to 65, 70% intensity. Hypertrophy can also uh, be beneficial in, in some of that intramuscular coordination, especially if you're using the higher intensity uh, end of the, uh, the, the spectrum there. So if you're 75 to 80% of your one rep max, you can get the benefits, some slight benefits that you would get in max strength training, like uh, improved motor unit recruitment, firing, and, uh, and synchronization. Now for max strength, you're gonna be using percentages or intensities of 80%, even up to 100% of your one rep max. Now max strength can also help improve rate of force development, up to a degree at least. Once we get beyond that, 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 that point where uh, max strength is no longer helping us improve rate of force development, we probably need to be transitioning into some lower intensity, higher speed exercises. Periodizing intensity in your programming uh, with, throughout your training block can help you manage the stress and recovery that's put on your body uh, through training. Now let's take a look at that recovery process or restitution process and, and how, it, how it works uh, with training. 
And this is a simplified picture of the recovery process or the restitution process. The purple line across the board is your norm. Those are the, the normal amount of resources that you walk in on a rested day. The green blocks up high uh, symbolize a workout. This is your resources as they, so as you do a workout, your resources uh, are reduced, they're taken away, they're depleted. There's a recovery, a second workout happens, my resources go down, recovery, a third workout happens, resources go down, and then on the fourth week, we call that a deload week, where we can uh, either reduce the volume or reduce the intensity or both, so the body has a chance to recover and adapt to the training uh, that we've just done over the previous three weeks. Now you notice the resources in that deload week rise above our norm line. If we're preparing an athlete or, or, or any client for a competition, we want to make sure that that point on the, mar on the line is where their competition has taken place. And I'll give you an example. I, I was training a, a, a college soccer player to prepare for the MLS or the Major League Soccer Combine and a, an explosive athlete he was not, a, admittedly he was not, uh, but he was a really hard worker and he did everything that we asked. And so we managed his training process and his combine was week five. So if this is week one, two, three, deload week four, week five was his combine. I didn't want to deload him completely because I still wanted him to have, I didn't want the, the training that took place here for his power work to go away too much before his combine. So what we did in the deload week, and this is a way that this is a way, uh, an example of manipulating uh, how you program. In the deload week, we kept the intensity really high, but we dropped his volume way down. So we didn't tank his resources below his norm line, but it kept that quality, that power and speed quality way up here. So when he went to his combine, he actually performed really well. Uh, he set personal records in, in, in all the events. I'm going to give you a couple examples to tell you which intensity is best for building max strength. There was some meta-analysis done in 2003, and I'll be very clear with you, I had to look up what meta-analysis meant. And so, but all that really means is they, they analyzed uh, a bunch of different studies and information to come to a conclusion. And that conclusion was that strength best or strength gains best occurred at 80% of your one rep max. So that might be counterintuitive to, to uh, us if, you know, well, if you want to get stronger, you got to lift heavier. Not so much. We saw on the recovery uh, line, the recovery curve there, that uh, we don't want to drop our resources too low. We want to be able to recover so the next workout is beneficial. And then at the end of it, we get the adaptation that we want. So if we're constantly doing 195% of our one rep max, that's very stressful on the body and we can be reducing our uh, available resources accumulatively, accumulatively over time. Training at an intensity of 80% of your one rep max allows us to still get the strengths of, or the, the benefits of strength without overstressing our body, therefore allowing us to recover better for the next workout. I was reading a, a, a study, um, not even a study, but just some of the training from the 1988 uh, USSR Olympic lifting uh, uh, team. And, and I don't know, I got that out of actually Science and Practice by Zatsiorsky. And they showed the percentage of uh, like the total volume of lifts and the percentage of that volume that they spent in each training zone. So for example, I think one third of the training was done between 80 and 90%. Um, I think a quarter of the training was done between 70 and 80%. So these are, you know, the best lifters in the world uh, training between 70 and 90% for over 50% of their volume. So that's right there should tell you all you need to know uh, about intensity for max strength. You don't always need to be up towards the 90 to 100 percent. I will tell you this, they did 7 percent of their training in that 90 to 100 percent range, so it's not like it's not needed. It's still very important. It just doesn't have to be the bulk of what we do. 
I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to listen to this lesson on intensity. Again, this was an introductory lesson on intensity. Uh, I hope you found it useful. I hope it helps you better understand how to use intensity in a workout, specifically uh, what intensities to use to get the adaptation that you need. You always need to be asking, what does your client or athlete need? And that's what you need to train at that time. If you guys found this video useful, please feel free to uh, forward it on to a friend. If you want more from iFast University, you can go to ifastuniversity.com and check us out there.